And we're back. Now to move on to the game proper. Yeah. Doing it on normal with the male character. On Stardate 48315.6, the US can have a female protagonist, but canonically he's male. Yeah. The galaxy uh, the for those people who don't know, there, Alex Monroe, our player Starfleet, character, we began our uh, could year have been a male home. or female model. In our numerous encounters, but we came as into of Elite Force 2, Alex Monroe species. was confirmed to be male. Having a limited crew with no chance of reinforcements, we determined that we needed a specialized team to handle the more dangerous situations. Tuvok, Voyager's chief of security, assembled an elite force of security personnel named the Hazard Team. Ensign That's kind of interesting that this idea has not come up previously. Team. It's like a security force SWAT team. Weapon, the well, we module. can blame Gene Roddenberry the for Hazard that. The Hazard Team has beamed to a Borg True. cube on a dangerous mission. However, the team was quickly overwhelmed, and the iMod is now in the hands of the Borg. Separated Oops. from the rest, Monroe is attempting yep, typical to rescue Voyager the plot. team. Somebody fucked up. Yep. And it has something to do with the Borg. My, how chiseled face. Yeah, Elite Force 2 took a major jump in graphics. Well, this looks like it's uh, a Quake engine. It is, it's Quake 3, I believe. Yep, powered by Quake 3. And I believe Elite Force 2 used the Unreal Engine. Probably. Ensign, I've uploaded your mission objectives and tactical information. Now Review let's see, does this play well with how the Borg are recognized as a case of they're going to ignore you unless you start causing problems? Yep. Hello, Borg. Got to admit, the models are actually pretty nice. Yeah, I tried to look at the different models, like, there, that's a Bolian, like a Klingon one somewhere. Which is weird that a Borg cube in the Delta Quadrant would have a random Bolian or a Klingon drone on it. Not really, with the Transwarp hubs, they constantly would go back and forth, probably exchange personnel. True. Oh, deactivated drones, and... No kick button to knock them on their butts. No, but I do do something eventually when I remember how it is I do it. Just for the fun of it. Now, the hand phaser is the only weapon that will recharge itself. Yeah, it's your holdout gun. You're, it's, you know, the one weapon you have that will apply to anything. Just so that way you don't end up running around with no ammo. Yeah, and it takes the place of a melee attack, I believe. Probably. And now... Dance, board dance. Oh, come on. There we go. Fly! And the quad shot. And dramatically spinning around as they fall over. Yep. Because this is one of the few times I get to play with the board without them shooting at me. For a second I thought I was about to be attacked since I hit that panel and be activated. It's like, oh shit, should I not have touched that? It's a board cube. Touch everything. Yeah, I pretty much can with this one. Anyway, this is where I actually need to go. Awfully convenient for the Borg to have access ladders in their cube. Yeah, I don't really see them really having much of a need for it. I thought they kept everything kind of out in the open. Yeah. And again, this is Voyager. Odd design choices abound. True, true. At least the uh, textures are appropriately H. E. Geigerish. Monroe, my savior. Get the eye on. It's on the table. 
This is Crewman Beesman. He is voiced by Tom Wilson. I have we have Biff accompanying us. I have no idea who Tom Wilson is. He was Biff Tannen in Back to the Future. Oh. Okay. What else has he done? Nice to see the Borg left him with his gun. Yep. Did I get his name wrong? Well, let's see, we have the Infinity Modulator. Thomas F. Wilson. Now, for some reason, I typed Tom Wilson into Google and got a uh, sports player. Ah, uh, it happens. But, nice thing about the Infinity Modulator as a weapon, though. Because it's designed to get yes. around the Borg adaptability as much as possible. But that wouldn't make for good TV drama, so it doesn't exist outside of here. No. Behind you! And hey, at least we have a justification for uh, enemy closets. They're beaming in. Why don't you just beat it with your head for a bit, and we'll see if that fixes it while we actually do the work. Yep. Uh, I come with you if I yeah, Beesman is on. our we'll kind of dumb jock strongman character. Sassy uh, black chick. I don't know. Let me look up the dossier for the force. <laughs> really, you're uh, poor jackass. Yep. Get used to that. He's like that through the whole game. Uh, fine. This. Well, there's one black woman and she's on the Beta Squad team, so we don't even get her. Okay. Hell, half of the uh, Hazard team that we see uh, only exists to be characters we can talk to. Back to goods. Two thirds of these characters don't even make it into the next game. Well, the next game takes place on a different ship entirely. Spoilers. Somewhat. Oh, loading screens. Yep. They're not long, so I just left them in. Which is pretty I did, cool. however, edit out any deaths I had. Oh, okay. Not in this level, this one is a full one, one run. In future levels. Yeah, I mean, this is the first level. I mean, even if it is a Borg cube. Seriously, you think the Borg would be the final enemy to fight in a Voyager or a game like this instead of the first one? It's Voyager, the Borg are more common. But what about, like, the Kazon or the Hirogen or Species 8749, whatever the number is? 8472. Thank you. Well, we've only just started. True. There's plenty of time for other species. It's also Star Trek, where fan fiction abounds, so there's plenty of time for original species do not steal. Here is a fun thing. I can blow them up instead. 
Oh, so those are actually, this game is the equivalent of red barrels. Kind of, they only really show up here. Uh, are there red barrels in this game? I don't remember. No. Okay, so just standard first person shooter then. Yep. With really wonky activation boxes. Oh, hi, Chang. Chang, why did you do that? Yeah. And you just blew up our path! You idiot! Now how are we supposed to get over there? Jumping puzzle. No. Actually, it's not very uh, clear what you're supposed to do, but you have to ride one of these things up. Jumping puzzle. This first game doesn't really have secrets, <laughs> either. It's kind of a bare-bones first-person shooter. Well, I suppose that's more what the Virtual Voyager mode does. True. But that also wasn't there until the expansion. Mm -hmm. Don't remember if I've shown it off yet or not, but uh, the secondary fire on the iMod is... Uh, a five-shot burst. But I think it's actually useful than, uh, using the regular shot. Because it's more spread out. Yeah, you haven't shown off the secondary fire this one yet. You have shown off the secondary fire of the uh, hand phaser, though, which is a wider beam. And drains the power like a... It also disintegrates instead of just kills. I think I do show off all the secondary fires on all the weapons, usually right after I get them. Although for the iMod, I might have, and we just can't tell because they look pretty similar when they fire off. Instead of wasting ammo! Trigger board and collateral damage. Not going that way. Nope, bottomless pits. Unfortunately, that is one thing they did get accurate about the Borg, is the bottomless pits everywhere. Well, it's not like the Borg are gonna step into them. I guess technically they're not bottomless, because there is a bottom to the ship. I don't know, depending on the style of cube, it could have open spaces on the bottom. Fair enough, but there is atmosphere. So, yeah. There are probably at least force fields or something to keep it from venting. Yeah, we're just going to get rid of you now. A lot more tactical information for this one little screen. Chill. Chill is actually one of the few characters who actually did show up in the show. Yeah. He was in the first season. Uh, Tuvok was trying to whip some uh, Maquis members into shape. Chell was one of them. Mm -hmm. I think there's only one other character who at least has a name in the show, but I may have even been just like a background character or not even shown up to that up here. Yeah. Well we'll get to her hey, a bit. Hey, be careful. It's only Borg technology. I mean it's not working. I don't have time for this. Are you gonna shoot the Yep. No way, the dog God damn. Which somehow causes the whole ship to blow. 
blow. I told you. Well, what was I supposed to do? Listen to Chell? Mr. Monroe, your tactical approach was, shall we say, tactless. All right, hazard team, report to debriefing. Nice going, Monroe. Well, I, he's a first-person shooter protagonist. Of course his solution is to shoot something. Console no work. Must shoot. Sir, if I may. You should try quarter. Because it's Star Trek! All panels explode! And now he's following Tuvok instead of going to the debriefing. Oh, gee, he's failed. He's game over, guys. Our protagonist has failed. Standard hazard team procedures. You may have survived the simulation. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised Foster's not on the intercom. Yes, Monroe, where are you? Procedure. Speak freely, Ensign. And again, he is talking with a superior officer. Mm -hmm. And they were heading I towards uh, I don't think hazard ops on deck matter. four. There wasn't any way I could have possibly rescued. They're just taking Someday, a different turbo Monroe, lift. You may yeah. Be Consider this to be your personal Kobayashi Maru. But Kobayashi Maru is for command line staff. More how you deal with death. Or, you know, the impossibility of your decisions. Status. Going by Janeway's haircut, this probably takes place sometime... After season five or six. Yeah. Actually, Paris is an ensign, so that narrows it down even more. Yeah, there was a couple of episodes where he got uh, demoted. What happened? To a he was like that for a season, I think. Or most of one. It was part of an ongoing arc yeah. that resolved itself, but... Actually, I'm not sure if that was actually something part of their deception with that, or... Yeah, it was part of their deception where they finally dealt with, uh, Seska. Oh, yeah. Yes! Wager gets blown up! No, I actually got a chance to meet, uh, Garrett Wong last year at Denver Comic Con. I met him, uh, in Edmonton this previous year, actually. He was... Wait, Voyager blew up! Yes! Nope, just phased to another area. God damn it. But now, uh... Garrett Wong was telling a story about how he actually had to hire someone to, you know, get him up in the morning to get him to work, because he was a... He was not really too happy with the show. Oh, there were a lot kind of, of people who... Uh, there were a lot of people who weren't happy with the show as it came to an end. Well, no, just like... Like, early in the show, like... Season 3, 4, somewhere in there. Uh, here, Captain. Sensors and most of Voyager's like primary systems are offline. Some kind of depression until and, repairs like, are made. Kind of the way his character is being beat down. <laughs> yeah. I can believe Kim that. is the O'Brien for Voyager. Ah, uh, and da 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 da. Opening. Ripped straight from the TV show. Well, considering it was CG in the first place, it'd be easy to uh, recompress it for the video game. Yeah, unlike the TNG opening, which <laughs> does not look that good in Final Unity. No. Actually, weren't they still using a? practical Voyager model at some point? Uh, I believe they were using it for the first couple of seasons, but they uh, switched out to all CG graphics when uh, DS9 went to full-on Dominion War. Yeah. Why did they change the music? They did. No, I'm asking why? Oh, maybe Activision could get uh, Paramount to give up the right to the Music. It, damn it, Paramount CBS, you're doing a, a Star Trek game of any stripe. You use the Star Trek music. Still, 
pretty as all get out, though. Yeah. Cells. Captain's log, stardate 538.54.7. Voyager was attacked by an unknown force and transported to some the kind of episode title graveyard. is Hazard rather than unknown. elite force. The ship is heavily damaged. Communications, propulsion, and other systems are uh, offline. Episodes. Until repairs are done, we're utterly helpless. Stranded. Yeah, I'm not really sure I call those episode dividers. find out what you can about those other ships and exactly where we are. Anyway, that's about it for this first episode. Yep. Well, thank you everybody. Next time we do everyone's job for them. It's Belotta we're talking about. She can't use a tricorder. <laughs> Well, she is half clean. I must hit it while thinking about it. All right. And stop.